What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Victory Podcast. I'm your host, Steve McGrath, and please excuse the bad lighting. I'm not in my regular spot, but this week, I am still pleased to bring you my conversation with eight-year NFL vet, a man that went undrafted out of D2 Grand Valley State, where he was playing everywhere on the defense, Dan Scuda. Now, like most of our guests, this guy has a great story where he spent four years just trying to make the Bengals roster, doing special teams, tried out fullback, would line up anywhere that they asked, and he ultimately really breaks through with the 49ers, has a big deal with the Jaguars, and he even tried to come back on a hip replacement to have year nine. Thankfully for his own health, he decided that, you know what, maybe this isn't the best call. But I'm going to let him explain that. But before we get into it, you know I'm going to remind you all to go check out Team Builder. They're our sponsor, and if you have anything to do with any teams, anything that has weightlifting, they only work with over 500 high school football programs across the country. The NFL, I mean, Jesus, just go check them out. Use the promo code VICTORY. You're going to get a nice free gift. So without any further ado now, here's my conversation with Dan Scuda. Two. One, Dan Scuda. How's it going today, man? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm I'm doing phenomenal. It's not every day that I get to talk to Aquaman's twin. Oh man, you had to save that one, huh? Okay, I see <laughs> what you're going with this. Yeah, no. Uh, congrats, you are the fifth person today to say that to me. So uh, is it that you know, really? That was... <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's constant. It's constant. So well, and I yeah, actually okay. argue, I think I look more like Aquaman than he did because I'm pretty sure he used some kind of some kind of contact situation that I don't have to do. So I might point. have something on the guy. <laughs> hey, well, if they ever make a second one, I think if nothing else, you should get some stunt double money, right? You got to be able to work That's in there. Saying. Yeah, I've, uh, I've actually been asking a friend, a couple of buddies out there to, to get in there and ask them because uh, I've been working out. I'm ready to go. So, you know, if, uh, if anybody from that series is watching, hit me up. <laughs> Yeah, I don't quite know. Uh, I think Jason Momoa, um, I'm not quite at that level of celebrity, but I, I'll see if I can pull a few strings on my end too. Yeah, yeah, I would appreciate that. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's been a couple years since you've last played. Uh, how much football are you watching today? Uh, I watch a little bit. Um, you know, I get, I get those questions a lot of like what my favorite team is or guys that I root for and and most of the time, it's just, um, you know, obviously guys that I played with and, and enjoyed being around, I root for them or whatever, you know. Um, but mostly just watch the game. Uh, I like to basically call out what the offense is going to run, kind of like a Tony Romo sitting at home, <laughs> except for I'm not on TV, so I can be wrong and it doesn't matter. But, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, a little bit like that. I'll, I'll watch some if it's a good game. I'm, I'm not crazy where I watch every game all the time or anything like that, but uh, I enjoy it. Cool. Um, and, and, you know, you're uh, a D2 guy yourself coming out of Grand Valley State. I, I mean, you, yep. you got to root for any time you see one of those guys that are just a long shot to make the roster kind of, you know, do exactly what you went through. Um, can you just talk about what that was like for you? Because uh, to make the jump from D2 to the NFL, I think it's perceived to be a huge jump, but realistically, the mental part of it and the physical part of it, did you really feel like it was a massive leap or was that uh, one side of that in particular that really gave you the most trouble? Uh, for me, it, it definitely was. It was way faster. Um, probably 90% of why it was so much harder for me was because I went from, from playing defensive tackle to playing middle linebacker. Um, I just think I, I had some linebacker experience at Grand Valley, but, but not a whole lot. Uh, pretty raw and then to to get thrown into Mike Zimmer's defense to make all the calls and and uh, try to you know figure out what I'm supposed to do with limited reps was very very hard for me um, I mean I was basically a blocking dummy for for preseason I don't think they thought I was any good at all until they finally put me down at the end a little bit during scout team and I threw some guys around and got a couple eyebrows raised but uh yeah it, it it was hard and, and it was mostly the mental part probably um, because once I got to catching on and realizing I could use my big body to my advantage, it, it started to help. 
So, I mean, what would you attribute to you then sticking around? Because, you, you know, coming in as a D2 guy, you're going to be considered a long shot. You, you signed with Cincinnati undrafted. Uh, special teams is, is, of course, I'm sure what you're looking to do. But I think I saw that you played or even lined up at fullback uh, the, the following year yeah. in the preseason. I mean, what's the mindset? Just whatever I can do to stick around? Yeah, I mean, I was uh, kind of crazy. I just I did, literally did anything I could. Um, when I started um, preparing after uh, my senior year at Grand Valley, kind of preparing for my my pro day, which I, you know, I didn't get to go to the combine or anything like that. Um, I started working on fullback stuff. I started long snapping. Um, I did DN stuff. I did linebacker stuff. Um, no three technique. I figured I was too small for that one and that, at that level. But um, I pretty much just tried to do everything I possibly could to get ready. And uh, I had some really good mentors. Um, that helped me along the way and some good trainers. And, you know, it was probably a lot harder than most people. You know, I had to drive from Flint to Toledo to train every single day. And then I would drive up at night to go to Saginaw to train at, at night. And um, sometimes do three days where I just train myself at the, uh, for the last thing of the day. Um, and I, you know, of course had to pay for that and everything, but so I didn't get to go to like a fancy workout facility and learn from, Michael Johnson or any of those people but uh you know I thought I thought it was kind of better that way you know it was all on me and I just had to work my butt off and my family was really supportive and uh you know I'm kind of prouder of my career after uh from you know making it that way oh and I can only imagine that you know that uncommon level of effort right for you to reap the benefits of it it's uh you know it, that's probably what separated you from most people in a similar type of situation yeah, but, I know, think so. I I got a little ahead of myself here because what I'd really like to do, you've already sort of talked about how versatile you had to be at Grand Valley mm -hmm. State and how that sort of paid dividends making it to the NFL. But in high school, you're a running back and you're a monster who can also sort of uh, <laughs> do a little linebacker work. What was your just story with football in high school? You know, how did you, cause I think also I read that you're a baseball player too back then. You know, yep. how do you decide that football is the route for you? And how does that road to Grand Valley State ultimately, you know, roll out for you? Well, I think uh, with, between baseball and football, I was I actually I think I had some better offers um, or potentially could have had better offers out of baseball. I just never even thought about it, really. I told the coach when he started to ask me about it that, you know, I'm, I'm a football guy. So uh, I think just I just knew my passion was there um, and I'm. I guess if there's anything that I've ever been, I've been really good at throughout my football career or life or whatever. Um, it's just kind of being able to be real with myself and know what I'm good at. Um, I knew I was going to have to switch to linebacker. Uh, I knew that, you know, cause there was a couple of other schools that wanted me to come play running back. Um, and I just, I just knew like there's, there's a very low ceiling for me at running back, you know? So, I did all right. I could run a little, and I had a good vision and stuff like that. But just being real, be a real, being realistic, I, you know, being in the NFL, even though I went to Grand Valley out of school, out of high school, that was like my goal throughout the entire thing. You know, I going to Division Two did not stop me from, you know, having that goal. And uh, so I just thought, you know, linebacker is the best thing you're going to be do well at. I like hitting people. I'm a physical guy. Um, and, uh, you know, just kind of was real with myself about what I could do. So uh, that being said, though, you, you move around a lot on defense, right? Because, you know, there's mm -hmm. talent around you. You got to sort of, they're going to plug you wherever they can, you know, maximize your value. If your goal was ultimately the NFL, like something had a break for you there. How did it, how did your coaches help you get noticed or, you know, help you sort of set goals for yourself so that you could put yourself in this position? Because it just seems like, you know, that it's, it's such a big step and so few do it that there had to be something there. Yeah. Uh, you know, moving me around so much, I don't know. I'm not sure that my coaches actually felt like that was beneficial when it comes to going to the NFL, just because, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to play a lot of positions and still sure, get noticed yeah. or, you get you start to get known as being a jack of all trades but master of none type situation um but actually you know i tell i told them when i and i went and helped that chuck martin down at university of miami ohio um 
I went and coached there for like three days and, and helped out with their D line. And I told him, I said, thank you for all that because all that moving around is what prepared me for ultimately what made me a good, good NFL player. Um, so probably the thing that, you know, made me the really successful was when it came to moving around and doing what I had to do, I just decided that's what I got to do. I'm doing it. You know, if I would have overthought it or, or, you know, started whining about it or whatever else, I think it probably could have eaten me up and I wouldn't have gotten to the level I did. But instead, I just put my head down and said, all right, this is what we're doing. I'm going to work at this. We're going to work at this. And then all of a sudden, I'm good at a lot of different things. Um, so, you know, I, it was and it was fun. You know, I got to play defensive tackle and get a sack on a guard. I got to stand up and blitz off the edge. And uh, for me, I just thought it was a ton of fun and um, got to get better at a lot of things. And in the end, I, you know, I was like, I think I was up there for sacks and, and division two all the time and stuff like that. So I got my stats and stuff. It's not like, you know, start, some guys, they, they give up a year. I had a buddy that gave up a year to be long snapper. And I like, that's a little tougher, <laughs> you know, like that's really, that's really putting yourself out there for the team. You know, for me, I think just getting to play a lot of positions was really just a lot more fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it'd be a ball, right. To continually try something new, but when you're going 100 miles an hour at it, how good you can get by putting in the work. And next thing you know, you're great at a bunch of different things. Exactly. Uh, I want to just to fast forward a little bit. You know, you go four years at Cincinnati before uh, ultimately you're entertaining free agency and, and you do go to the 49ers. What yeah. was that like for you? You know, four years in, did Cincy sort of decline to bring you on? Were there just, did you want to see what, what else was out there? Like, like, how did everything line up that you're now going to go play for Harbaugh? Um, so I had some, I had some injury things at Cincinnati. Uh, the second year there I played, there's a, there's a little bone in the back of your ankle called the os, os trigonum. Um, and they moved me to fullback in preseason my second year. And uh, cause they were, they really liked me on teams, wanted to find a way to get me on the team, and, and that ended up being an avenue to get that done. I, I, that's what I guess anyway, because um, I wasn't a very good pullback. Um, and I had both of those break off in actually both my ankles in oh, wow. like, a week, like a week apart. Like one busted on me, and then a week later, another one. Like I'm just not made to be a fullback, apparently. So, uh, so I played an entire year on that. It gave me some back issues. Uh, it gave me, and I, it kind of flared up a little bit the second year. And um, actually, I went up to a guy in Minnesota, and um, he really saved my career because he kind of, he's a really good PT up there, taught me how to deal with it. And it was a lot of it was coming from my hip. And for the Bengals, you know, they didn't, they don't know that I did all that work to figure out what was going on. They just thought I was going to be worthless after that you know after that year and uh so they they probably saw that and didn't really think much of me anyway as a player um and san francisco you know they they gave up that 108 yard uh kickoff return in the to um was it jacoby jones right in yeah, the super bowl so. and to, so they were looking to get every good special teams player they possibly could and Regardless of my ankles being busted up and my back being busted up, I think I was probably one of the premier special teams players in the league at that point. So uh, that's really what led to Harbaugh really want me on that team. Um, and luckily, Vic Fangio wanted me to play outside linebacker instead of inside. And that leads to you um, really getting a chance to shine when Alvin Smith can't play. You, you, know, yep. you get your best year as a pro, get a couple sacks, and – you know, what was that like for you now? Because even though if special teams might have looked like your avenue, you're now in a linebacker room that has Alden, Patrick Willis, you know, Navarro Bowman. Now you're just with, you know, monsters and nothing against any of your Bengals teammates. But going from one linebacker room to the next, and even, you know, just looking at Marvin Lewis versus, you know, Coach Harbaugh, what were some of the things you were picking out as this is what successful guys are doing or successful coaches are doing in order to get this high level? Um, yeah, it, it was definitely a big difference. Um, for me, the, it just was like a chance. Like I, I just, I never felt like I was really going to get a real chance to play in Cincinnati uh, online on defense. And like I said, that was always my goal. I always raised the bar. Yeah, I was good on teams but I wanted to play on defense as well. Um, and 
for me, Harbaugh was basically open to any guy that wanted to work hard and got the job done. And I got the job done and I, you know, I did well. And, and it, it was great to be around guys like uh, Navarro and Pat and, and all them and all them, because man, I learned a ton from them. Like all of them, you know, he, he taught me how to, how to just go out there and ball, you know, the guy, the guy was so athletic and so talented that there was times when, uh, and it was great that he was there with me because, you know, a lot of times coaches are very strict about how you play or, or the position group or whatever. And it's, it's definitely a nice thing about being coached by Vic too. But I think Alden brought to light that, you know, playing a different style and getting things done can be, can be very beneficial. Cause I was, you know, believe it or not, you would think like the special teams player is going to come in here and, and probably just be the guy that's, uh, you know, just doing his job and, 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 and really worried about being in the right place at the right time, which I was, but I was, I'm kind of a wild card when I play, like I'm kind of a wild man. So it was fun to be able to, even though I'm just this guy that's supposed to come in and play special teams, be able to use all those skills that I've always had and not have to play, you know, super controlled. And uh, it was really cool that Vic allowed me to do that for one and that, you know, Alden kind of taught me that it can be, it can be done that way, you know, because in San Fran and, or not San Fran and Cincinnati and a lot of defenses and it kind of depends on the defense and the coach and all that, but they can be very like, you know, very straight line. This is what you, this is where you step. This is where you go. And I was a little bit better at uh, just feeling it, you know, and just playing ball. Yeah, and, and I mean, the instincts that you would kind of develop playing at different spots would, I'm sure, really give you tells, whether it's what the offensive lineman's doing, what the running back's doing. And I, I mean, when you look at the highlights, you can see, you know, the, the instinct plays that, you know, you just read it, boom, you're gone. Yeah, and that's that's really what I was good at. So, you know, if I would have been having to play stiff and, and read through everything before I got a chance to, to go make my plays, it, it would it would have probably been a little harder. So I was able to just get after it, you know, and and that's kind of some things between, you know, Bo and Patrick, everyone asked me about them and they're, they're just both amazing. So it's hard for me to compare either one of them, but they're, they taught me different ways of doing that too, where Patrick was like very, very good at his job and did, you know, did his job very tightly and, and, and controlled and was just ridiculously good at doing it, you know, by the book. And Bo was so natural. It was like, they're completely different guys, but they both got it done. And, and, amazing to watch so if anything it just helped me raise the bar of my play and on that defense it was like you don't screw up because you don't want to be the guy that's looking at Navarro while he's like ticked at you you know like because they don't mess up so I'm not gonna be the guy that messes up you know <laughs> yeah definitely uh, but you know after your two-year stint there you do end up going to Jacksonville and you know, you signed a big deal at Jacksonville. So I just wanted to ask you now, not as a football player, but just as like a functional human being, how do you take an influx of money that changes your life and your lifestyle and your options? And like, how do you now deal with this new layer of responsibility that you have weighing on you? Yeah, uh, I mean, it was it was tough. But, you know, for really, I, I looked at it as, as like – not necessarily the money, but like what it represented that, you know, I it must've been so special to yeah, everything you did. A guy that, you know, could be counted on and, and can come in and make your team better and, and getting that respect, you know, because it's like, it, it was my dream coming true. You know what I mean? Like everything that I worked for was to go in and be the guy. And, uh, you know, that actually didn't really end up happening there, but, <laughs> but I, uh, but I, you know, just that whole scenario of going in and, and, and being wanted um, uh, was, was really special to me just because like, you know, like you feel like, I, I used to joke that if I wrote a book about being a, um, a, a free agent in the NFL, I'd call it party crashers, you know, because it's like you always felt like that extra guy that's like, what are you doing here, you know, and, and and it, and it started to feel like, okay, I'm, I'm a guy that belongs now. You know what I mean? So like, that was, that was really special for me to, to get that opportunity to, um, to feel that way. Um, so it was, it was really cool. And I, I was ready to ball. I was like, all right, cool. Well, maybe I get to play more now, you know, cause even though I 
did really well in San Fran. I the rushes where I got sacks were like first and second down, you know, beating a, a tight end or a, or a fullback, or you know, I'd get like you know two or three third, maybe two third down rushes per game, and I had to get a sack or else I wasn't going to get one. You know, that was my only shot. So, um, so. I was hoping for a little bit more opportunity, you know, was really what I was mostly excited about. Cause once again, at that point, I'm like, all right, I'm doing this now. Let's go pro bowl. You know, like that's just the way yeah, I am. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you still have two good years there. And unfortunately for you that the timing of those two years was right before Jacksonville really turned it on. Yeah. Uh, what, cause you were there now, you saw the Gus Bradley to Doug Marone transition, you know, what did you see looking back at it as the foundation for the success that they had? I, I mean, did you, is it hard to believe that they were that close to being, you know, a, a team with three wins to just flipping it to being a, a 10 win team? No, I, I mean, it didn't feel like it was that far away at all. And I would really argue that we were more talented, you know, when I first got there in some ways, you know, um, but uh, maybe not as talented as they are in, in a lot of places now, but man, we were a really good team. Um, it's just sometimes, you know, culture can be very important in the NFL. I mean, I'm, I'm really very big on that and, and doing the right things. Um, and, and it can tear you apart or it can make you a really good team. I mean, that's the biggest thing that like the Patriots, they just continue to have that same culture and, and, you know, doing things the right way. And it just, it pays off for them. And, uh, and I just don't think the culture was 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 there uh, when I first got there, and and it looks like Doug, you know, got that going a little bit. Yeah, yeah, certainly makes sense. Um, you know, one thing I had accidentally <clears throat> had skipped over was, you know, what was it like having to practice against Frank Gore? Because the guy, if anyone is ageless besides Tom Brady, it has to be him. Um, was there any running back? Maybe it's not him. That was just like such a beast to have to try to like hit and you know just thump with in practice oh uh well in practice man Cedric Benson was super tough back when I was early in Cincinnati I mean that guy could run through some tackles um he was more in games I would say than anything for for you know obviously I played a lot against Marshawn and some of these guys that were really really tough but Frank not even just being hard to tackle, but as a guy, like, he, he, there's just – there's no way you can not love that guy. I mean, I'm all for, you know, Hall of Fame for him, and, and what he's been able to do is just amazing. And uh, he was just a really, really special guy that has so much passion for football. And, um, you know, especially in short yardage, I mean, that guy finds a crease like no one else – ever I don't think in the NFL and um in, in, in short yarded situations and really any situation but uh man it was it was special I mean everything about that team was was really special though I mean I talked to guys especially the 2013 season where we ended up losing in Seattle um everybody I talked to from that team like Bubba Ventrone who's the special teams coach in Indy now and uh and some of the other guys, Michael uh, Wilhoyd, actually special teams coach down in uh, New Orleans, like we all say like, man, that was the most fun I ever had playing football was on that team. And it was because of the passion of Frank and um, some of these other guys, you know. Yeah. And, and I mean, Frank just scored a touchdown, you know, to, to yeah. win. I mean, the ageless wonder. Yeah. Um, Put but, a big smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know the guy, but mine too. It's just like it, it, he's been doing it forever. Yeah. Um, and, and no one seems to have a bad thing to say about him. No. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to just sort of jump now to the end of, of your playing career. Um, what was it like for you to have to make that call that, you know what, um, and I don't know whether there are offers out there or not, but, you know, to ultimately hang it up, it has to be a bittersweet pill. You know, what was that decision like for you? Uh, well, so had I had hip surgery after Jacksonville um, and, and came back from it and, uh, came back way too early with the bears. I um, mean, you know, I was, I had uh, a very a major surgery on my hip and came back after four months and, and it just popped on it again. And it just was a mess. Um, if anything, it was, it was the, I don't think what I saw on film was, was, was me, you know, and 
it, there were times where it looked like I'm not even given the amount of effort that I'm used to, which has never been a factor for me. And that just killed me. You know, I can't see that. And I think that's like, I don't want to put words in his mouth or anything, but I think that was similar to Pat um, with his foot. And, and it just killed him to see him not play at the highest level because that's what he is. And he wants to be known for that. And so there was some of that for me and, and some of it was pure pain. I mean, I was Bears preseason. I was running down a play and then my hip would be out of place and I'd snap it back into socket afterwards. Oh. I mean, it, it was bad. <laughs> so like, I'm not sure that I had a whole lot of choice here, you know? <laughs> um, but some of the things like that, like I was, you know, believe it or not, I was kind of a speed guy. Um, was kind of my thing especially on teams just being able to never take the big hits because you just outrun everybody and with that kind of stuff going on I couldn't run so when that goes I and I played nine years or eight years and um ended up getting the, the ninth uh later um it, it was just I'm good you know I, I did good it was I got I had five surgeries you know it's like at that point you want to be able to function for the rest of your life, you know? Sorry, I had a cough there for a second. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I mean, you're, you know, in your thirties, you, you want to enjoy, you know, you, know yeah. you still have at least half your life left, you know, two thirds of your exactly. life. Exactly. Exactly. And I, and I got involved with some groups that I was excited about, you know, I got involved with a restaurant group up in San Francisco and uh, some other groups that were, were, you know, a good, looking like a good future for me so that helps yeah. too so in the two years since it's just about this time two years ago um you obviously have stayed busy so uh, you have your hand in a couple of different things do you have any one particular thing or are you still in this phase where you just want to feel different things out and just see what makes the most sense yeah um i really really love limon rotisserie uh, it's a group that i got involved with when i was in san francisco um it's peruvian food it's amazing the uh, operators we have up there are awesome guys. Um, it's, uh, it's been very special to me to be a part of that. Um, I'm more of a passive um, investor in that situation, but I love it. And I, I would like to try to, you know, keep developing that. And they want to develop the brand more and more. So I like helping with that. Um, and I've, I've got a couple of things that are um, kind of on the way that I, I don't want to uh, let out the bag yet. But I, I'm like... I'm, I'm like an artsy guy, right? I got a couple of inventions coming that I'm excited about. Um, All right. Little I'm sports forward. type things. Yeah, they're, it's, it's something you would never expect out of me probably. But, um, but yeah, I, uh, I got a few things going. Um, it's really, for me, it's really only been a year really because I was thinking about playing, you know, on the, even on the, um, on the hip replacement. I thought about it for a while. So there was really a full year of me, you know, training to get back like, hey, maybe – maybe this will be a thing for me. Um, and I thought it'd be actually pretty neat to be the only person to come back after a hip replacement. Like that's pretty awesome, you know, or did Bo actually play on one or. Yeah. You know, I, I really don't know. Yeah. I don't know either, but um, I thought that would be pretty cool. So I, you know, I thought through, thought that through and then at that year mark, I decided no. So, um, so it's kind of, it, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. I guess time flies when you're, when you're, not doing that but uh enjoyed it you know I got to go check out Europe for a while um I really like to travel and uh so I'm I've probably been taking my time getting into more of a, a you know a, a more prominent role with a with a company or something like that because you know I know at that point I won't get to travel and do the things that I really haven't got to do for a long time because of ball and how much I put into that so uh I'm, I'm taking my time. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And now that you have the time to do it, I'm glad that you can and you seem like you're enjoying it all. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, Dan, the way that I like to end the podcast is we have a quick little ditty I call the gauntlet. I got a couple of knee jerk uh, responses from you for a couple questions. I got to okay. know how you're feeling. Number one offense or number one defense. What is most important in winning? Defense. No surprise there. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> hey, every once in a while we get an offense. Oh, um, uh, yeah. What's your favorite football memory? My favorite football memory? Oh, man. Probably scoring a touchdown in Europe. That was pretty awesome in London. 
That's a pretty good one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> now, do you have a, one player or one coach that you just wish you would have had the chance to play with in some way? Uh, let's see. Oh, man. I really – at one point or the other or another, I always thought it would be fun to play for the Patriots because, like, I just felt like sometimes with with other teams, like, maybe I was a little out of place, whereas, like, because I took football, like, crazy serious, you know, like, that was, I was, you know, so I, I just felt like I would have fit in with those guys really well because that's, you know, how Tom is and some of the people there, so I, I think I would have enjoyed it. Yeah, and having grown up in New England, I would have appreciated it if that had come to fruition as well. Uh, now, did you have a pregame ritual that you always stuck to? Oh, geez, man. Yeah, it started actually started the night before. And it's kind of weird. You wouldn't expect it, but I ate a giant cookie with uh, fudge on top of it. I, I don't know. Like, I did it one game, and I just – I played well. And, like, you know, once you do it one time, you got to keep rolling. Yeah, or if there's works, a QC to cookie, like, you know. Um, yeah, I went through a whole a whole ordeal um, before the games. Uh, and I, you know, I was big on – I had a lot of injuries and everything like that, so big on taking care of my body and doing a lot of stuff like that to get ready. So, yeah. Uh, now, what's most important? Is it the players or is it the scheme? Hmm. Man, I don't I, – I think it's both, but I guess really I gotta go both. players because a great team is no good. With, a great scheme is no good without good players. So at one point or another, it comes down to the players. Hundred percent agreed. And the very last one I have for you is: What's the best piece of advice that you could give to a young kid that looks at your career and wants to be the next Dan Scuda? Um, I would say just uh, you know putting your head down and working, um, no matter the situation. Just, just remember the goals that that you you have, and, and stick to those goals, and and don't be denied. You know, it doesn't matter if uh, if one team doesn't think you're good enough, or one coach, or or if everybody doesn't. Who cares? As long as you do and you stick to it, you can uh, pretty much become what you want to be. There you have it. Now, Dan, of course, I found you on Instagram. Is there any place else that you would like to direct any of the listeners to follow you? To follow me? No, not really. Um, you know, I'm not really a big social media guy anyway. Um, so <laughs> no big deal there. If they could, if, if there's any football players out there listening, um, you know, I do love uh, the group that I've been working with called Union Sportsman Alliance. Um, it's actually free to sign up for, for any, uh, any union um, employee, which we are as, uh, you know, NFLPA. Um, and uh, we can go show, so um, sign up, and you get a newsletter, and you get opportunities to go fishing and, and do some fun things with kids. Uh, it's a, it's a really cool organization, and um, so whoever wants to go sign up for that, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Boom! There you have it. Well, Dan, thank you so much for taking the time to go through it all with us. All right, thank you.